So what do we need to do with a red header to harvest the biomass that we're trying to put through? And remember, remember what we're trying to do, I talked about it before, you know, the header was designed to take the head and a little bit of straw. So what are we doing now? We're trying to harvest weed seed at the same time. So we're going to cut it off like your front lawn, yeah? 50 to 150 mil off the ground, take all of the straw and deal with it, okay? Traditionally, we built the living daylights out of our straw and turn it all into dust and throw it on the sieve and then we end up with sieve overloading issues, okay? That's, that's generally what we do. So let's go and have a bit of a rethink about all of this. Yes, we've got to thrash it enough so that we don't have unthrashed grain and we need to then separate it, okay? The better we thrash it at the front of our concave, the more separation area we have. And if we think about what we get with sieve loading with a single rotor machine, where does all of our material unload? Well, that's dependent upon pinch point. So remember before I spoke a bit about pinch point. So let's draw a circle. Okay, here's our rotor. On our case flagship, does everyone know where our pinch point is? It is. So it's a little bit this side of the bottom. Okay. How do we measure it and identify where it is? We bring the special tool. I'm amazed that they let me carry this through the airport, to be quite honest, but anyway, all right. So this is one I made the other day because my special tool, it's in my special instruction, <clears throat> I've given them all away, okay? But all it is is an 81 millimetre gauge. Righto. So what do we do with this special tool? First thing we do, make sure our concave is level and parallel to our rotor. How important is it? A couple of mil will make a five tonne an hour difference to what your header will do, right? Incredible amount of difference. So we put this on the first bar of the front concave at the bottom and we get an operator to bring our concave up until the skin of the rotor and the concave are 81 millimetres apart, right? So that's our base position start. Then we come to the back of the second concave and we remeasure and we make sure that it is exactly that 81 mil, yep. If it's not, we got a little, we have a little turnbuckle up in here. That's the only adjuster, that's your front to rear level, okay. Unfortunately, it's not left and right hand threaded, you can't just turn the darn thing, you've got to take it apart. So pull the cotter pin, turn it, put it back in, test it, make sure you get your 81, 81. So once you've done that, we know that the bottom of the concave is level and parallel with our rotor. Yep, now we need to get it parallel on the left side. So we use the same tool and we go on the first bar down at the front of the concave and we have a look and see what we've got. Yep, if it's not 81 mil, what do we need to do? Go to the right hand side of the machine, loosen the adjuster Okay, and slide the concave left or right, so we start with our 81 mil. We've got to get that 81, and then we do the same at the back. Does everyone understand where we're doing this? So if I put this tool in here, I'm just going to climb up for a second. Okay, so the first concave bar that we can see is this bar, and I'm going to put the tool underneath the bar and put it in there. Okay, right? So I haven't set the bottom, so I don't know that it's at the 81. But what we've done is we've just got our concave parallel and level with our rotor, okay? What that does is it tells us where our pinch point is and our pinch point will be on the very first bar at the bottom on the left hand side, okay? So remember before when I talked about crop flow, so all that material comes in through our concave between our rotor and our concave and through our pinch point. And as soon as it goes through the pinch point, it starts to unload. So if our pinch point is at the very bottom, where are we unloading? On the left. On the left. So what does that do to our sieve loading? Overloads the left. Okay, so this is what happens to all, all single rotor machines. And you've got to try and eliminate that or reduce that when you're harvesting cereals, okay? What else do we harvest down here? You guys harvest loosen, 
Some people do. Somebody told me that you guys harvest crazy things like carrot seed. Yeah, right, eh? So what do, you, what do you need to do with your sieve loading to harvest a really, really, really small grain? You gotta get it right, don't you? So how do we get material onto the right hand side so we can even up our sieve loading? What can we do? Oh, that's a band-aid. Shift your pinch point. Okay, so let's talk about pinch points. So I had a friend who had two 1480s. Remember, I'm old, I might not have grey hair, but I've been playing with this stuff for a long time. And the 1480 had an international badge on it. That's how old it is. He had two of them. One was a pretty good header. It'd do 24, 23, 24, 25 tonne an hour. And the other one would do 18, 19, before it was horrid, okay? Trying to work out what the difference between the two was. And the only thing that we could determine that was different was actually the location of the concave. So the concave wasn't parallel in the bad machine. You couldn't adjust them. So I said it before about farmers and gas axes. And then supplementary to that, I started playing with a friend's harvester every weekend Moving your pinch point can make a vast difference to what the machine will actually do. And what I learnt from that was that if you read the operator's manual, it tells you in there you can move this, at, but it doesn't tell you what you can achieve by moving it. It only tells you you can move it, right? And it does give you some numbers. It says to you, you can move it left or right by six mil or thereabouts. Yeah, great. Let's roll on to today. So I've been talking about doing this since the mid 1990s. So that the dealer can go in and go, oh yes, I've checked the position of it and now I'm gonna shift it. Okay. So what's the happy number? There isn't one really. Six to 12 mil. And where are you gonna shift it? So if I'm standing in the driver's seat, and I want to move my loading from the left to the right, where do I have to move my pinch point? I've got to move it further left to make it unload later. Yep. So I'm going to move the concave to the right. How hard do you reckon it is? No, can't move it like that. You wish you could. Why can't you move it like that? Because when you move your pinch point, you've got to redo your zero stops and you've got to redo your concave cow. No, no. When you redo your stop bolts, see these two bolts up here? What they are is the stop to physically stop the concave from touching the rotor. Okay, so the last thing we do after we've done a concave shift is we'll back those stop bolts out, bring the concave up so it touches the rotor, find out where it touches, make sure it touches front and back, and then we're going to open that, wind those bolts down a turn and a half, lock them up, and then we're going to redo the concave cowl. We've now told the concave indicator our actual true concave opening and clearance. Yep. So the end result is we move our pinch point, we don't have one bar in contact anymore. What will actually happen if you bring that concave up in its current position to that single bar, it'll touch, you'll hear it thump, right? When you move it to the right, you'll get four or five or sometimes six. You'll actually spin that rotor around and you'll actually hear it clip each of the bars. So I've got now a lot bigger thrashing surface area. Okay? So I've just added a whole bunch of engine load, haven't I? Yep. Remember you can poke 85% of this engine horsepower through that drive shaft that drives this rotor. So that, that's where all your horsepower goes, that's what burns your fuel. I've just added a great heap of load to it for you. How, how do you reduce that load, take that load away? 
and you can do it from the cab, what do you do? Open, Open your concave. Okay, so typically in our harvests in the west, we'll run our concave from 6 to 16, depending on the volume of material that's going through. The more volume of material, the wider they usually run their concave. What would, I, what would you say if I told you that we've got machines that used to run a 6 mil concave opening, that are as wide open as they can run it, uh, harvesting a five tonne wheat crop. What do you reckon the engine load does? Anyone got an idea? What does that mean that you can then do? Save fuel, Save fuel and poke more material in there. So the wider your concave opening is, the more material you can process. Okay, the wider your concave opening, the more gentle it is the more gentle it is, the better the straw quality is. What's the ideal thing that we want to do? We want the straw to come out the back of the header with the backbone and no grain on it. If you can get that, that's awesome. And you can get 55 tonne an hour out of an 8120. Okay, where's Mr. Ben? Because we did that last year. Okay. So it can, you can get really, really, really good tons an hour poking a lot of material through one of those things. There's only one issue, it's rotor loss. Okay? So everyone run into rotor loss with a red header? So what do you do about it? <laughs> Cassie will talk about that in a minute. Anyone with their red header run into rotor loss? I'll bet you do. You just probably don't know it. Okay, so where do we see rotor loss? With a typical standard rotor, 35 to 40 tonnes an hour, somewhere in that mark. And it doesn't matter what it is. If you can get 40 tonne an hour out of a 7240, you'll only get 40 tonne an hour out of a 9240, even though you've got another 180 horsepower. Why is that? Because they've got the same rotor set up. Okay, so what do we do? We go in this back section in here, which is our true separation area. What's in that separation area right now? And? Yeah, so your spike rasp bar. Anyone know what a spike rasp bar is? Yes? It's got a little hook on it, looks like my finger. Okay, looks like a standard rasp bar, it's got a little hook on it. What, do, what does that hook do? Grabs the crop mat and shakes the living daylights out of it. Okay, so let's, let's digress for a moment. So in 2000, I spent a month or so in the United States. And during that period of time, I got to have a bit of a play and I went to Arkansas, down where all the rednecks are, and I went harvesting rice. Anyone goes, why rice? Anyone walk through a rice crop? It's wet, it's damp, it's bloody thick. You trip over your own feet and you're handling all that biomass and it's the hardest thing to separate. If you buy one of these as a rice machine, it has got 106 spike rasp bars on the rotor. Why is that? Because they're there to agitate the crop mat and promote separation. What happens when you go and put 34 of them into the back of one of these? So a few years ago I did an experiment with a pair of 8240s and we put 26 in one and we put 34 in the other. Let's see where the rotor loss was. And both of them were almost the same, both operating in the same conditions, two brothers driving them. And they both got rotor loss around that 37, 38 tonne an hour. We went and put those in. The one that had 26 spike bars in, we got our rotor loss back at 50 tonne an hour. And the other one we got it back at 55 in a five tonne barley crop. So what they did with the one had 26 spike bars in it. They went to the third header, which was their 9120 that was sitting in the shed, grabbed the other bars out of it and spiked her up and they made a pair of 55 tonne an hour headers and sold the 9120. Okay, why is that? They had three headers and they were doing the same job with two. Talking to John afterwards, halved his fuel bill. So he burnt half the fuel that he'd allocated for his harvest, cut 200 separator hours off each header, just with the capacitive going. What's the byproduct of all of this? If you can keep your straw intact, 
your mog loading on your sieve goes down. What happens when your mog loading goes down? Your sieve works better, easier, cleaner, separates easier. It's much easier to set your header up. So you get a set of numbers, punch them in, and it'll stay like it all day. Really, the only thing you might change is you might close your concave early in the morning and then late in the evening as your losses increase. Right, but it'll all be rotor loss that you're trying to deal with. Okay. All right, so let's talk about some of this small stuff. So I have a mate who grows coriander and mustard, okay? It's like trying to harvest loosen and trying to harvest some of the grass seeds that you harvest. What do you need to do to a conventional harvester to do that adequately? Okay? So think about where the material goes and what it's trying to do. You need to keep it in that front concave until it goes over the thrash point. Okay, and you need to definitively thrash it the first time. There is no second chance. It's got to do it on that front concave. Yep. So shim your rasp bars. And I mean shim them to a tenth of a mil. Get it absolutely perfect. So how do we do that? So we actually back the stop bolts off. We take the concaves out of the left-hand side. You can actually use the concave on the right side as your indicator for where your rasp bars are. So you can actually remove the stop bolt to wind the stop bolts up, spin your rotor, bring your concave up and where it touches the bars on the right concave, because you've levelled it already, that's going to tell you that you're at the right point. And all you do is you put a little spacer underneath the rasp bar to get them all nice and even and you've only got to do the front section of the rotor. That's the bit that you want to do all your thrashing on. And then your concave selection is absolutely critical. So an extreme thrash or hard thrash concave or concave cover plates, but only on your front concave. Do all of your thrashing down there. Okay? If you don't grow one of those small seeds, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be worried about shimming them. Right? We always used to do it. It was something that we used to do. And don't worry, I've been paid paid a lot of money over the years for shimming grass bars it was a waste of time okay why because once we move the concave and do all of that we run our concave at 25 to 35 99 percent of the time and so it becomes irrelevant yep. how long does it take to do so we did one in three hours yep. on monday yep plus complications Plus complications, yeah, we had a couple of complications. That machine we went to on Monday, the concave was not parallel and wasn't square before we even started. Okay, so that was a bit of a challenge. All right. Okay, how hard is it to do? I'll give you a set of instructions that are quite easy to follow and you can do it yourself. And the first time you do it will take you maybe four hours. And what I say to people is if you, if you think it's not going to work, have a crack. And the best thing you can ever do is pull the header operating out of the paddock and do it and then put it back in the same paddock. So we did a, did a few of those. Ben and I did that last year as part of our concave, our concave, our rasp bar testing regime that we did last year. And a couple of those places where we went, we doubled their capacity and halved their losses. Okay? Very, very easily. Yeah. Well, I had some help. So I had, had a rattle gun man, I had a third, a third set of hands, so, and my wife, so, yeah. You, you mentioned to the guys the other day yep. that um, they, they tried, to, tried and set up to, to take it into cereals, not just do canola. Yeah, so the guys, uh, one, of the, one of the families that we went and saw on Monday did this last year, and they said, oh, our engine load went up, and so we changed it back. So just remember, and I sort of said to them, oh, under what conditions? Oh, in our canola. So remember what's happening. If you've got a, a big bulky canola crop, these guys are talking about a three to four tonne canola crop. There's a lot of material. Those spike rasp bars are going to increase the drag on your rotor, okay? And also because you've increased, you've, you've moved your pinch point and you've got more surface area on your concave in contact or as close to contact, your engine load in canola and probably bulky bean crops might go up.
But then look at your program. And I said to the guys, you know, what's your program? Oh, 25% canola, 25 barley, 25 lupins, 25, lent, uh, 25 uh, wheat and 25 lentils. I said, so your cereals are 50% of your program and on 25% of your program, your engine load's going to go up a little bit. What happens when you get your cereals and your capacity goes up by 30 or 40%? What you might lose in the first two weeks of harvest, you're going to get back in the first day, two days of your cereals. So they're going to have another go. Okay. So we, we rarely will see a four-ton canola crop in the West. I've seen a couple. Um, and those guys, their programs aren't that much. They're 15 or 20% of their canola is that. So, yeah. So just remember what you're playing with and, and what might not work. So my advice is mark your, mark your adjuster on the right side. I'll go around and I'll show you all individually when you want to. Mark it at the, at the zero position. Then when you move it, write on the cage how far you moved it. And I'm, I'm telling you, you've got to move it at least six mil. So the one we did on Monday, we moved six mil right. Then put another line on it so you've got the two indicator marks. Why? Because you can quickly move it back, okay? If you think that that is what's causing your engine load. But typically in cereals, what we see is a huge reduction in engine load. What can you get? So we pulled an 8250 out of a paddock that was done, Pete and I were talking about it a minute ago. It was doing 37 tonnes an hour, had 1% grain loss. We pulled it out of the paddock, made the changes, put it back in the paddock an hour and a half later, and we started testing at 30 tonnes an hour and it was linear at 0.4 of a percent loss in five tonne increments, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And then he had to unload. And so we dropped the tray at 65 tonnes an hour. And when he threw the unloading auger into gear, we put a big cloud of smoke up and the engine stopped. It went to 127% engine load and it shut the engine computer down. Right. So we'd run out of horsepower. Had we run out of rotor? No. 0.3 of a percent grain loss at 65 tonne an hour out of an 8250 in a four and a half tonne wheat crop. Okay. So the guys said to me, well, you know, we, we don't want to drive that quick. And I said, I know, but it's proved the point. We knew what we could get before and now we know what we can get now. If you're happy at harvesting at 40 tonnes an hour and you see this stuff coming, push the stick forward and go for it. Two days later, his header drive was sitting on 50 to 55. They were happy at that, and that's what they harvest at. And as I just said to, to the boys a few minutes ago, and that guy's bought a fourth header, so I'm going to set that up for him on Tuesday next week. So this is, this is what you can do, guys. Even if you take the money saving, say, take the fuel burn saving, or take the grain loss saving. You tidy up what you put on your sieve, you're going to make it a lot easier on yourself. And is it, but, Brad, is there anything specific, say, for our yellow friends who are looking at this? Because we've talked about that a little bit before. Yeah. So, yellow guys. Someone said that they're expecting a nice new dot 90. Right oh. Wouldn't be yellow jackets, go to Happy days. You. You have got this rotor in a yellow header, okay? So New Holland three years ago introduced a variable pitch rotor. So the old rotor is gone, new rotor is this, commonality of parts, okay? Same rules apply. Only thing with the New Holland, because you've got the two rotors, you don't have to worry about unloading points. So you've got two rotors counter-rotating, don't have to worry about moving the pinch point, you can do it, they have got adjustments, you can shift it, but I'm not climbing up inside there and trying to get down in the middle to measure where that pinch point is, okay? I want to get somebody younger and thinner than me to do it, all right? And, and playing with the pinch point can make a big difference, but the pinch point positioning is all about where your loading goes and, and getting sieve loading. And your New Holland having the two rotors and the V on the pan, inverted V, that separates it into the two crop flows pretty well. All right, next bit, separation area. Okay. 
Those rotors have got six spike rasp bars on them. They're spaces for 16. So what do you do? Go to your dealer. Pack that thing with spike rasp bars. That'll take your rotor loss away. And remember the rule, loose is fast. The wider you can run your concave, you only need to thrash it enough. You don't have to thrash it so much that it falls to bits. So as far as concaves go, the best concave you can use is the one that works. Okay, so what challenges do we get? So incomplete thrashing, so that means your concave isn't aggressive enough. So maybe you need to think about what you're using, all right? Plugging, so everyone grows barley, I guess, barley growers. We have all sorts of issues with a conventional concave set up in barley. What happens when your concave plugs? You look in there and all you see is a mat of straw hanging out of your concave. How do you deal with that? What do you do? Concave's wrong. So what choices have you got? All right. So you buy a new case harvester, you get a small wire, a couple of smalls, a couple of larges, a couple of large skips, and a couple of black bean grates. Try the black bean grate. It will help, but it isn't the be all and end all. Go to the shop and buy a round bar concave. It'll change your life. Okay? So I've got guys in the West who harvest only do canola and barley. They run a small wire concave in the front, or an extreme, or a hard thrash concave, and three sets of round bars, nothing else. Gentle, don't hairpin, don't plug, huge capacity. Try it, have a crack. If you can't buy one, go find an old bent concave, go down the workshop with your gas axe and your welder, go make one. Brett, why does the round bar not plug? So, so if you think about hair pinning and what causes hair pinning, so the flat material, so flag leaf primarily, but also some pieces of straw, they will go and they'll stick around something that's nice and flat. If you go and put a round surface in there, it's got nothing to hang up on, okay? So it just rolls off. So that's one thing. The second part of it is, remember what you're trying to do and leave your straw intact? Every one of those bars, those flat square bars in your concave is an interrupter bar. So it's designed to interrupt the crop flow and belt the material so it breaks material off. When you put a round bar in there, there's nothing to hit it on. It just rolls over. So that rolling motion agitates the crop mat, crop mat and allows the grain to come out. Okay? And it doesn't just work in red headers. Your challenge with your New Holland is finding somebody who makes that piece. Australian farmers, isn't it? Gas axe in one hand and a grinder yep. in the other. That's it. And don't worry, one of my red guys the other day when I was talking to him about cutting this out, I showed him some photos of ones that we made and he goes, oh no, I can do a better job than that. So he's got in here and grabbed the standard concaves, right? Left the wires in them, which I told him not to do, and he's gone and rounded the, the top face of the, of the, of the uh, interrupter bar and then welded, got round bar and welded it behind it, right, with it just proud. So the front edge is rolled and the round bar goes over it and it's a three quarter inch diameter round bar and he's just welded that in because it was easy to cut the pieces and weld them in. And he goes, I'm going to try that. So, see what happens. Everything works just to what degree. Okay. Yeah, as long as you measure it, go measure it and quantify it. All right, so while we're talking about concaves, my, my friend over here who loves testing grain loss and I have got a trailer load of concaves and we're going to drive all over Western Australia to both red and green harvesters and we're going to get itchy and dusty for a couple of weeks. Come back next year and we'll tell you all about concaves. <laughs> We're going to learn. Here we are. Yeah. Your other friend over here is going to try it over in South Australia. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. So we'll do a bunch of testing and, and Cassie's going to do some over here as well. So, all right. So, I don't have all the answers. I only have some ideas. Give it a crack is what I'm telling you.